Hello guys, welcome. This is Dr. Vahid Haydari. I'm a lecturer in cybersecurity networks at Staffordshire University London Digital Institute. Today, I'm going to run a virtual open evening whereby I'm going to talk about cybersecurity BSc course we offer here at SUL. I would like to talk about cybersecurity and body of knowledge for cybersecurity. First, let's see what NCSC is. UK's National Cyber Security Center, N for National Cyber C Security S and C Center is the independent authority on cyber security in the UK. Very recently, they have published what we know as a cyber or cyber security body of knowledge. And the aim was to inform and underpin education and professional training for cyber security sector. This project is known, CYBAC, is known as a culmination of international cybersecurity effort over the last three years. Very important project, a team from UK Academia working along with international cybersecurity community and at the end they came up to this developed guide to cybersecurity body of knowledge known as CYBAC. This is a major landmark and for the first time in history, we have in hand a characterization of breadth and depth of cybersecurity. And as we will see later, it ranges from human factors all the way through the hardware security. We see what they are, what they are looking for. So this first full version of cybersecurity body of knowledge can be used for us educators and academics as an authoritative guide to a foundational knowledge underpinning cybersecurity. Based on that, we can design our courses and our modules in the realm of cybersecurity. The illustration here is very important. It shows you the classification or categorization out there for cybersecurity as a result of this research project. After three years worth of study by NCSC, it starts from human, organizational, and regulatory aspects. Black band on the left. So it consists. Uh, law and regulation, privacy and online rights, human factors, risk management and governance. And then the opposite side, we have attacks and defenses. They include malware and attack technologies, adversarial behaviors, forensics, and finally security operations and incident management. Third category of cybersecurity is system security. Areas like operating systems and virtualization security, triple A, AAA, cryptography, distributed system security, hardware security, network security, and web and mobile security. The interesting point with the last three subcategories of system security is that they have overlaps. So hardware security overlaps with infrastructure security, as you can see. Network security is a subject to be discussed not only in system security, but also in infrastructure security. So it has overlap there. And web and mobile security, as you can see, it overlaps with software and platform security. The fourth category is infrastructure security. It includes hardware security and network security. Again, they have over overlap with system security, as just discussed. 
The third category is cyber physical system security. And the fourth category is physical layer and telecommunication security. They are all categorized under infrastructure security term. Then we've got fifth class of cyber security and that is software and platform security. The first area to be covered is web and mobile security. As seen previously, it overlaps with system security. Second subclass is software security and third is secure software life cycle. This is important because this is the first time in its history that it's been written down to make it a real enabler for developing cyber security as a profession. We have agreed on the characteristics of different areas within cyber security based on that we categorize or classify it. It's been developed by community and it is for the community. And that's the plus point here with cyber. It's the basis for describing course content and of course for certified undergrad and postgrad cyber security degrees and programs. Uh, it can be used for any certified training to make sure that the provisioning of the education is very much matched against the specifications of CYBOC. So let's see more details what each of these classes and subclasses uh, cover. I start from human organizational and regulatory aspects. Uh, from the left hand side again, the first subclass, law and regulation. It considers the statutory requirements, compliance, obligations, ethics, data protection, and the developing doctrines on cyber warfare. Then we have privacy and online rights. And there we're going to talk about protecting personal information. Also, considerations about censorship and circumvention, covertness, electronic uh, elections, and how to preserve privacy in payments and identity systems. Then we've got human factors, whereby we talk about behavioral factors impacting security. So we talk about the security culture and security awareness as well as the importance of security controls on user behaviors on the human factors a subclass of human organizational and regulatory aspects of cyber security. Then the fourth subcategory is risk management and governance. So here, security management systems and organizational security controls are discussed. This includes standards, best practices, and how to mitigate risk after video risk assessment. Then I move on to what you see on the right hand side under attacks and defenses, the black bar on the right hand side. It starts with malware and attack technologies. So technical details of exploits are discussed here and also technologies and methods associated with discovery and analysis of the exploits will be uh, detailed. Then we've got adversarial behavior where we investigate the motivations and behaviors behind the attacks by attackers. We investigate malware supply chains and attack vectors and also money transfers aspects of cybersecurity. The third subclass here is forensics and collection and analysis and reporting of digital evidence in a lawful manner. 
in support of incidents or criminal events uh, is intended with forensics. Security operations and incident management, the fourth subcategory here, it considers maintenance of secure systems and how to respond to security incidents. Then I move on to the third category, third class system security. It starts with operating systems virtualization security. Later within the structure of uh, PSC cyber security, you see that you have two different modules at two different levels covering operating systems. It is important because it tells you the protection mechanisms that OSs they use in order to implement secure abstraction of hardware and also for sharing of resources, what we need to consider for isolation in multi-user systems and secure virtualization and also security in database systems. They're all discussed here. Then we have AAA subclass of system security, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So all aspects of identity management and of course authentication technologies, architectures and tools for authorization and accountability, not only in isolated systems, but also in distributed systems, are what is intended with AAA. Then we have the third subclass here is cryptography, whereby we discuss core primitives of cryptography as it is today and also as it emerges over the time. So emerging cryptographic algorithms are also considered discussed. We want to see how to analyze them and we want to see protocols that use these cryptographic algorithms. Then we see the fourth subcategory here. Distributed system security is important. Uh, security mechanism related to larger scale coordinated distributed systems. Aspects of secure consensus and considerations with time even systems, peer-to-peer -peer systems, clouds, multi-tenant data centers, and distributed ledgers, they're all part of this distributed system security to consider. Hardware security, as the name suggests, security in design, implementation, deployment of general purpose, and also specialist hardware is intended with this uh, organ, I would say, of body of knowledge for cyber security. Areas like trusted computing technologies and also sources of randomness, because as you may know, randomness is very important in cyber security. Different algorithms consider randomness in cyber security as the heart of their uh, functionality. Network security is the next subclass. Um, as mentioned before, it has overlaps with infrastructure security as well. So security aspects of networking and telecommunication protocols. Uh, routing security, very really important one, and my personal interest as well. Network security elements, specific cryptographic protocols. They're all considered that network security. Then we have a web and mobile security. We know that it has overlap with software and platform security category. And there we consider issues relating to web applications and services uh, distributed amongst devices and frameworks. And different programming paradigms are discussed there and also protection models uh, for web and mobile security. The fourth category is infrastructure security, hardware security and network security already discussed as they have overlap with system security. Then the third subclass infrastructure security is 
cyber physical systems security. What are cyber physical systems? Systems such as Internet of Things, IoT, or IOE, Internet of Everything. Industrial control systems, attacker models, the safe secure designs, and security of large scale infrastructure, to uh, name a few. Then we have the fourth subcategory here, physical layer and telecommunication security. You don't touch much uh, physical layer and telecommunication security with our uh, BSC course. But for those who are interested in consider security concerns and limitation of physical layer. So aspects like radio frequency encodings and transmission techniques, unintended radiation and interference can be discussed under physical layer and telecommunication security. Then we move on to the fifth and final category of cyber security, software and platform security. We know about web and mobile security, the first subclass of soft uh, category as it overlaps with system security. I already discussed that. Second subclass here is software security. We want to see the programming errors that result in security bugs and we want to avoid them. So techniques for avoiding these errors will be discussed here. Um, you have two modules at least to cover different uh, techniques for software security. So best coding practices to ensure secure software, improved language design and tools, detection of different uh, programming errors in this area for current systems. Uh, they are all considered under software security. And the last subcategory of last category uh, here is secure software life cycle, where in detail we see application of security software engineering techniques in whole systems development life cycle. That results, of course, in software that is secure by default or by design and to make sure that security is not an add-on uh, for the system later. So that was my overview of cyber, cyber security body of knowledge. And this is the state of the art. This is very recent. Now that we have a good view over cyber, cyber security body of knowledge, now we are in a good state to go to next slide, whereby I introduce 12 different modules that we offer as part of BSC Cyber Security at Staffordshire University London. These 12 modules that you can see, they're all compulsory. So you have a fixed structure with cyber security program. We start from the left hand side, those four modules under the left column, they shape your level four of university program. And then the middle column is level five, and then the right column is level six of three years program for BSC cyber security. As they are compulsory, and as there is no optional module for you to take, make sure that you pass all these four at each academic year uh, for each column from left to right to be able to move on to the next level of your academic degree. Now, the good news for you is that we already match these 12 modules against what you see in Cybok. And I'm going to tell you now in the next slide that how these 12 modules uh, will cover in full or in part different classes and different subclasses of Cybok. So 
before me going through the details here. Bear in mind that final year project module that you do at last year of your undergrad program is excluded. And also advanced topics in cybersecurity, another level six module you do at the third year of your undergrad program, that is also excluded. The reason is that the nature of these two modules are quite open and we left them open so that we can stay tuned with the latest changes in the cyber security with the latest advancements there and we can adapt these two modules to the most recent updates and changes so i start from left hand side uh, digital technologies you can see it covers areas of hardware security and network security then the cyber security on the top it covers different areas of system security areas like cryptography or triple uh, a or identity management they are all discussed on the cyber security module that you do at level five then you have operating system terminals and biometrics that's a level six module and that level six module means that we're going to see in details operating systems and also virtualization security part then we've got it infrastructure security that covers also system security then we have web development and operating systems web and mobile security um, subcategory of software and platform security will be discussed there then you've got software development and application modeling that's a level four module and it briefly discussed software security and secure software life cycle and then you've got ethical hacking whereby attack technologies and different forensics methods are discussed there. Then we have cyber operation network security to touch areas of network security and hardware security. That is not the only module that you have about networks and network security. You have also a level four module next to it, a broken concept cyber security. These two modules together will touch network security and hardware security. The networking concepts is more fundamental and network security will later sit on top of that. Then we have commercial computing. And in commercial computing, we're going to see different uh, human, organizational, and regulatory aspects of cyber security aligned with areas like project management, for instance, uh, in the course of designing a software as a solution for requirement uh, from industry, let's say. So this is how we match different modules of our cyber security BSC program against cyber to make sure that if not all, but most areas are touched by the cyber security course before graduation. And this way we make sure that our graduates are viable job seekers when it comes to employment after graduation. In order to summarize the discussion today, I introduced Cyborg and I told you that cybersecurity is an umbrella term. It covers different areas. It covers application, it covers information security, network security, operational security. Cryptography, access control, and user education, disaster recovery, all these different areas come under the umbrella term of cybersecurity. And then I introduce Staffordshire University of London's BSc honors in cybersecurity structure with 12 modules and how they are matched against cyborg in order to ensure that. Our graduates remain at the front line of knowledge and skills 
when it comes to employment. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope the presentation was useful and hope to see you very soon. This is Dr. Vahid Haydari.